ce qu'est la France, pays de tradition, mais aussi puissance économique et technologique, tournée résolument vers l'avenir, une France qui se prépare avec détermination au monde nouveau que vont apporter les prochaines années. Enfin, une France alliée sûre et constante qui entend apporter une contribution originale à la recherche de la paix et à la poursuite du développement. Poursuite ou reprise. Car les relations franco-américaines ne sont pas seulement, chacun conviendra, la célébration d'un passé glorieux. La préoccupation majeure en 1984 est celle de la sécurité en Europe et des relations entre l'Est et l'Ouest. À quoi il faut ajouter la relation nord-sud dont nous aurons à nous entretenir. Sur ce point, la fermeté et la clarté des orientations que j'ai données à la diplomatie française sont connues de vous-même et de votre administration. Notre fidélité à nos amis est sans faille. Et nous restons nous-mêmes organisés autour de cette notion fondamentale qui s'appelle l'équilibre des forces dans le monde et en Europe. Fermeté et détermination sont indispensables, mais vont de pair avec le maintien du dialogue, et particulièrement du dialogue avec l'Est, parce qu'elle est forte, indépendante et sûre d'elle-même, dans la mesure de ses moyens, qui sont restés fidèles au grand passé que vous évoquiez à l'instant. Sûr de ses citoyens, la France peut et veut s'ouvrir à la discussion avec tous et sur tout. Mais d'autres tâches nous attendent nécessaires à cet équilibre du monde. Certes, la relance de la diplomatie, de l'économie américaine, la présence de sa diplomatie, crée des conditions favorables à des reprises dans tous les sens, tandis que de graves périls continuent de peser sur les systèmes financiers internationaux. Ils ont pu être conjurés, mais ne seront jamais assez. Et pourtant, l'essentiel reste à faire, Consolider un acquis encore fragile, faire reculer la misère qui demeure aujourd'hui dans tant de régions du monde la vraie racine de la guerre. Gardons-nous de l'indifférence. Elle est notre ennemi. Les pays du tiers-monde n'ont pas d'autre univers que celui que leur propose la fin et la peine de vivre. Si ils ont un autre avenir, cela dépend d'eux et de nous. Vous le voyez et vous le savez, et nous en parlerons. Beaucoup de choses restent à faire ensemble. On n'en aura jamais fini. Et notre amitié a peu de chances de rester inactive. Monsieur le Président, Madame, je suis heureux, en effet, devant cette maison et dans cette ville, face à ces lieux qui évoquent pour nous tellement de résonance, de vous rencontrer à nouveau. Nous n'avons jamais cessé d'échanger, de communiquer nos impressions et nos projets que ce voyage resserre encore les liens de fraternité entre nos peuples. Ce serait la garantie la plus sûre de progrès plus rapide pour atteindre enfin cette région où vit la liberté que nous imaginons et vers laquelle nous sommes en chemin. Comment finir cette première allocution Sinon, 
en m'adressant à tous ceux qui nous entourent, ici et partout dans ce vaste pays, on my best greetings to the great American people. Mr. President, Madam, ladies and gentlemen, my visit today is taking place between two anniversaries, that of the Treaties of Versailles in Paris last September and the anniversary of the Allied landings in Normandy in two months' time. Now, I may say that uh, this is uh, perhaps a case where uh, chance has uh, been on our side, but I think that there is more than this. There is something symbolic. And in fact, there is no such thing as, as chance in the history of peoples of the world. There is, however, something that is called destiny. And our destiny is indeed a common destiny. And so I think it is natural that my first thoughts should go to the Americans and the French, brothers in arms, who from Yorktown all the way through the ages to Beirut have in fact shed their blood together. And history shows that these sacrifices have never been made in vain because their purpose was not to conquer nor to achieve power, but to defend freedom. Now, despite all this, perhaps our two peoples do not yet know each other well enough. And so there is sometimes, shall we say, room for certain uncertainties. Now, after having had conversations with yourself, Mr. President, I will and I'll be, I'll have the opportunity of spending five days traveling through the country in order to see again places that I've learned to know in the last 38 years since my first visit to this country, but also to get a better understanding of the dynamic qualities of the country, the great diversity of the United States, its culture and its modernness. But my ambition is also to show you during my visits and during our conversations on world affairs and the affairs that concern our two countries, I want you to see the, the true picture of France. France, which is, all right, a country of tradition, but is also a country of economic and technological power that is looking towards the future. And France that is preparing herself with determination to the, for the world of the future that the next few years are going to bring to us. France, which is a constant ally that can be counted upon and which intends to bring a, her own original contribution to the quest for peace and the pursuit or the resumption of development. Because relations between our two countries obviously cannot only be a matter of celebrating our glorious past. And the, our main concern in 1984 must surely be the question of security in Europe and relations between the East and the West and also between the North and South, which we'll be talking about. And here, the firm and clear orientations that I have given to French diplomacy are known to yourself and to your administration and to our friends throughout the world. And based on the basic idea of uh, unfailing loyalty to our friends and the concept of the balance of forces worldwide and in Europe. Firmness and determination are indispensable qualities, but they must go together with uh, keeping the dialogue open, particularly with the Eastern Bloc. Now, France is strong, independent, and sure of herself, and therefore, is uh, willing and prepared and uh, determined to dialogue with everyone on all subjects. And France, sure of her own citizens, is, as I say, open within her means uh, to discussion on all matters while being always loyal to her friends. But there are other important tasks that we have to tackle jointly and which are essential for the balance of the and the equilibrium of the world. Now, it is true, we recognize that the upturn, the economic, uh, the economic circumstances in the United States and the presence of 
American diplomacy worldwide. All this creates favorable conditions uh, for an, a recovery of world affairs in all sense of the term. And it is true that the serious dangers that were threatening the international financial system last year have been able to be met, but our efforts must never be uh, relinquished in such areas. And yet, despite all this that we have achieved, I think the main task is still ahead of us. We must consolidate what has been achieved, which is still fragile. We must push back the frontiers of poverty, which remain in so many regions of the world the true, the genuine roots of war. And we must guard ourselves against too much indifference, any indifference, towards the Third World in particular. We must remember that the Third World is in the same universe, although in difficult conditions, as ourselves. And what will happen, the future of the Third World, is something that, of course, depends on them, but also on us. So you appreciate, Mr. President, that we have still many tasks to perform together. I don't think that, though it is likely that our friendship will have uh, much opportunity of remaining idle for very long. We have numerous tasks to perform. Now, Mr. President, Madam, I am really happy to be here in front of the White House in this city of Washington, in this, in this garden, in these places, which means so very much. To, to, to all of us. Uh, for you and I, this will be another of our, of our meetings, and we have always been able to, to communicate among each other concerning our, our plans and projects. And it is my earnest wish that this visit should establish yet closer ties of uh, friendship and fraternity between us, because I think that that would be the best way of ensuring even speedier progress towards that region of the heart, perhaps, where liberty exists. We are moving in that direction, but we still have some road to follow. Now, Mr. President, how can I end these remarks, these first remarks that I'm making here on American soil? Well, I wish to say to all those who are here, all those who are present all over the United States, I want to extend, and in English, my warmest greetings to the great American people.